Hello and welcome to Chess Books 90. Um, I've got some old books here which I haven't shown in these shinwax before, I don't think. So I thought I would uh, have a look at some old ones. They're pretty good. They're all pretty good, I can assure you. In a way, they wouldn't have lasted as long as they have if they weren't. But it is that they are, whatever that means. Modern Chess Miniatures by Leonard Barton and Wolfgang Heidenfeld. Um, it's a shame that this is such a small book. Uh, it deals with um, <clears throat> openings, games by openings. Um, and it gives you no less and certainly no more than 161 pages. So it was quite small, you know, but once you start to uh, go through it, let's see what we get. A few grandmaster names draw come out like Botvinnik, four games, Irva, two, uh, Canal, three. That's surprising, isn't it? Gela, three. Keres, six. Six. Olafsson, six. So this one's pretty good. All pretty good. And uh, <clears throat> with Leonard Barton and Wolfgang Heidenfeld, neither of whom have written in terms of books. Leonard, obviously, in print as journalist, but uh, Wolfgang Heidenfeld, neither. I mean, I know a couple of things, two or three things by Wolfgang, but it's uh, not as much as I would have liked. And he has long, he has long left us. Um, let me give you a flavour of what you're going to get. It's in descriptive notation. All these books are. Here you are. So it's fairly dense in content. This is a Dover, but um, you might be able to get the original. Is it these are reprints? This is Wolfgang Heidenfeld, eight times South African champion and Irish champion, and then above and British champion, 1954. In fact, he was co champion. 1960, published in 1960. And this is a 1977 edition, uh, which we brought out in paperback. There we are. It's quite good, quite good. Miniatures, games up to 24 moves, I think. Hmm. Probably not enough diagrams. Involved position. I'll show you that. There you go. And on to the next one. <clears throat> this is um, published by Routledge. It says on it nine shillings. Not quite yet, well, Quite a. It looks like a king. Looks like Father Christmas. He's playing against the knight. This is by Dumont. Carefully annotated collection of short, sparkling games. The subtitle is Combinations in the Openings. So there you are. And it was published in 1963, which was too late for me, um, but first published in 1941. Let's group my openings. Um, 
and there's over 200, 201. The short and sharp encounter at chess has an overwhelming number of friends among all classes of chess players. Yes, it's, it sounds a bit naive, doesn't it? They have the idea of laying them out in single columns with the moves running around the middle. So it makes for perhaps a more relaxing read. Of course, you may not wish to be relaxed, you may wish to be stimulated, but nevertheless. Um, as I say, they're grouped by opening, so Vice, Kupak. So if you look there, that's just a little notes of the sort I might make or, or in, in a parrot or, or newspaper column or, or what you will. Also shows other books in the same series, which are not about chess. I don't waste any space. Register of stratagems and combinations. Wow. Kingfield combinations. Wow. Deflecting and clearance or decoys. How about that? There's an index of players, which extends to many games by Shaq Mises. Oh, something almost a dozen. I like old Mises. I think she's a very interesting player. Conway, the Honourable Henry Seymour. Well, can't see that. Abraham's gives, or rather, Abraham's lost, lost to uh, Irva from Bournemouth, 1939. I can't help thinking that probably Abraham didn't particularly want to play over. So he played a, a joke opening. He went d4, b5, e4, bishop, b7, f3 from the Dutch champion. And poor old Abraham scarcely had time to take his coat off or even smoke one of his horrible big cigars. Mm. Yes, I, I think this is what's, what's called a happy hunting ground for unusual games or games would otherwise have been forgotten in past or entirely. Once again, I'll show you the uh, format. There you go. And that's just 200 miniature games of chess. And if you did want to buy it, it's nine and six. I'm so sorry, it's nine shillings. Now here's the mother and father of them all. Do, 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 do. A thousand best short games of chess by the one, the only Irving Chernev, an American master. Perhaps if you owned one of four or five great chess libraries of the world, you could by diligent search, find most or all of these delectable nuggets. But who has either the time or the essence? So Mr. Chernev, who is both, has provided us here with thousands of the sweet sugar-coated pills in all chess literature. Well, fancy that. Fancy that. It's published by Hodder and Stoughton of London. And it was first published in 1957. <clears throat> These are short stories of the chessboard. They certainly did have a... And they're grouped by theme, epaulette mate, mate by under promotion, mate by castling, mate by ringed beasts. You know what that is. You have to nominate 
off. You have to nominate the piece that you will deliver the mate with. And if you fail to do so, either because you couldn't or because your opponent has taken it, <clears throat> then you lose by default, if you will. Every game of the collection has its own raison d'etre, its individual diverting feature, which justifies its inclusion in an anthology. That's a nice thing to say. And I'll give you a flavour of what you get. There we are. I think you could call this holiday reading. Some of these games can be played over without a set, but most of them you will need a set, I think. Just if you have average ability at the game as I do. No wonder Mengarini wins this when he has much ambition, adventurous pawns working for him. Exclamation point. A pleasant, pleasantly dashed off at 10 seconds a move. So there you are. Games at odds. Hmm. Napier playing against Amateur. Hastings. I thought 1904. I thought Napier had emigrated. He was about to emigrate if he didn't go. He played off with Atkins for the British Championships. Mm, must be wrong. He must have emigrated shortly afterwards. This is called Abraham's is robbed of a beautiful queen sacrifice. So he comes up with another even more brilliant exclamation mark. Well, how about that? It's lovely, isn't it? There's a game played in my own hometown. Alaska. It doesn't say that it, it is a simul game. But it was. There we are. What an interesting cover. Nothing too garish. Now, 100 Master Games of Modern Chess by Tartakova and Dumont. There is 500 games, which I have, I think. And this is the uh, sequel. I think they brought this out because they couldn't afford to print. Yes, 500 Master Games of Chess, I was right. Um, but they couldn't afford to put this in it, so they did it in two stages. Um it's rather fun in as much that they have an interesting mixture of the international and the regional and the national together in the most democratic manner the text the text is a bit the fonts are a bit small for me but uh, you can read it it's nicely printed actually better quality paper than some of the others and that is a lot to take in, isn't it, really, on one page. The author's strong players in their own right and superb writers supply original annotations that throw fresh light on each of the games. Together with a fine selection of games, these annotations make this book one that belongs in every chess player's library. I'm not sure that so many thousands of years later that's true. 75 years later nearly. Um, but it is, um, it is, shall we say, it has its heart in the right place. And uh, it's nice to see it. I'm running out of words here, but uh, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. This isn't a book I know that well, even though I've owned it for many years.
Once again, I'll show you just some sample pages. Two columns, descriptive notation, interesting notes. And finally, the sequel to this one, which was the sequel to the other one. So it's the third by Dumont. Chess, more miniature games. It's a Routledge and Keegan Paul. And it's published in 1953. And it's dedicated to my friend, Mr. J. N. Derbyshire. Oh, Mr. J. N. Derbyshire. I think you were more likely to be a sponsor or a supporter than a player. Pure. Group by openings. Lots about the uh, Vienna. Pink Gambit. Declined and accepted. Sicilian. Tyler Khan. Center Panther. So it goes on. The intense pleasure it has given me to collect these beautiful examples of imaginative chess emboldens me to hope that my readers will find equal enjoyment in their study. Well, how about that for naming your colours to the mast? You have to uh, approve of it. The uh, fonts are very old fashioned, which I rather like. Yes, this is a game played during the war, almost on the battlefront. I know Gollenbeck wrote a book entirely blindfolded. He didn't have pieces, always library. And despite the fact it has 50 games in it, only one of them contains an error. How about that by Harry? That isn't worth a clap. I don't know what is. Hmm. Yes, these are very, very basic notes. Um, yes, it's not. Uh, wouldn't spoil your enjoyment, I'd like to think. But I would have to conclude that it's not. Um, it's not a book maybe for top players. Not because of its vintage, but because of its approach. But nevertheless, you can still see that a lot of care has been taken, but in a different sort of way. They have uh, concentrated on clarity rather than encyclopedic delivery. A game by Spassky with one S. Boys Championship, Leningrad, 1949. I wonder whether he was due to become a good player. The Mandrake Tournament. Gollenbeck versus H. Brown. I'm pretty certain Harry loses this. He doesn't, he wins it. H. Brown was a deceptive player. Mm. Mm. You know, there, player has games I've been studying recently. Nuremberg, 1896. There we are. Down here. Some of the cuts around you can hardly see it. There it is. Let's have a look at the back, see what treasures they store for us. Register of stratagems and combinations. So that's a posh way of saying the uh, terms used. But, um, oh, the mates, and it says which squares the mate is delivered on. King's bishop seven, king's rook six, king's knight six. Oh dear, I don't know if you want that. Knight's fork, 
knight's sacrifice, last rank combinations. There we are. Rossellino, five games. Rubenstein, four. And so we carry on. Let's see how many games by Botvinnik. One. <laughs> One game by the world champion. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games by the one and only Amos Byrne. Don't know about that. This is not a book to make you into an expert, but it may be a book of relaxing interest. Aitken versus Physicus, the two doctors, an ancient continuation and the forerunner of the dragon variation. E4, C5, Knight, F3, G6. It was played several times in the Zuka Talk Blackburn match of 1881. Because I was challenged recently to find the oldest dragon I could find. Well, that's very interesting because I didn't uh, think to look there. I will now. This is, as I say, Aitken versus Physicus. Dr. Aitken was to live into my lifetime. I saw him play in the West of England Championship and in the Veterans at the British Championship in air. In fact, he was a Scot. Mm -hmm. Pazikas is, I think it's cousin used to play. Very strong player, stronger than Pazikas. Mm. Yes, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. It's done for enjoyment. Mm. Game of Alakines against Navarro. Hmm. I'm totally fascinated by this. This variation, which Alakine pulls off against Navarro there. You see it. He doesn't play d4. Instead, he plays knight e5, and the bishop gets hounded away to h7, whereupon queen h5 induces g6, and then the queen comes to f3, which is still threatening mate, and f7. Alaska pulled this off as well. And Alakine pulled this off against poor old Ron the Bruce. We never lived it down as long as he lived. And he lived a long life. Hmm. Game from Nottingham, 1936. Alakine versus Botvinnik. Botvinnik playing the dragon. I can't help thinking that Botvinnik was never that happy playing Sicilians. He never seemed to me to be at ease with them. Probably preferred something more solid, maybe. And by J.J. Walsh against Bob Wade. Dublin, 1951. Wade playing the French. Wade played my friend in a county match some years back. And Wade said to him that he knew more about the French than anything. I'm sure that's true. Hmm. Well, I could waffle for it endlessly forever. We've done five books. I hope you've enjoyed. And perhaps keep a look out for these books in second-hand bookstores or eBay or in reprint form or whatever. Hmm. I was looking at something in the Latvian 
Counter Gambit recently. And here it is called the Greco Counter Gambit. For a old gambit, of which the idea was traced to Damianos in the 16th century. My Greco the Calabrese, the Greek. Greek. Well, this has been Chess Book Reviews 90. I'm James Pratt. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.